So um, the general idea now is that we're going to be getting ourselves centered, grounded, and kind of attuned so that we can prepare ourselves for our yoga practice. So it is just being comfortable. I always sit on something because it gets my hips a little higher than my knees, and that is better for my low back. Um, that's a visual concern. Um, sometimes I have to put something under this ankle. I'm just bringing to your awareness how aware I try to get of how I physically feel as I start to center myself. So close our eyes. And as you look, how your hands are just resting on your thighs. You're adjusting your seat however you need to be more comfortable. I like to reach the top of my head for the ceiling so that I notice that my spine is long, my neck is long. Engage my core by just bringing the attention to my belly button and seeing if I could just pull it in a little bit towards my spine. Maybe I notice my shoulders relaxing away from my ears and how that can stretch my chest open a little bit more. And then I take a nice deep breath in. wander and thoughts will come. It's completely okay, but I just don't associate with it. I just let it go. And I come back to noticing my breath or just extending the word. to be present to this time on our mats. We're grounded, meaning we are in touch with our body. We can feel things that maybe we weren't able to pay attention to because Saying that in a small, 
short sentence to me. So I am vibrant and radiant. I am at peace. I am comfortable. The I am makes it something that's happening, makes it more to be manifested. Find that short sentence that works. So you should read it to yourself quietly three times and then you have it. So come standing on our mat, you'll layer a little prop. And this next uh, yoga um, flow is called um, Lion's Breath or um, um, Breath of Fire. And it's a three phase inhale. So we lift our arms with a and then it's a big I really want to under your mask go expand that whole face scrunch that whole face um, tongue out sound is the um, uh, ujjayi breath kind of like a, when you're fogging up your glasses and that we do 10 times and it really keeps everything up so just follow along to your back Exhale, we fold down, forward fold. So our hands rest on the mat if we can get to that. If we want, we can bend our knees so that we can try to start scaling our belly on our thighs. Hands can be down more. And then from there, if you can stretch those hamstrings, lengthen up. Or just stay in a nice bend and then a little bit of a stretch, whatever's working for your body today and your flexibility. Hamstring stretch, nice upper back stretch. And then as we inhale, we can wrap, um, bring our hands up our shins to our knees. Now our back is flat and the crown of our head is reaching for the front of the room. And just feel that stretch in the back because it's nice and long from the top of the head to the tailbone. Exhale, forward fold again. 
Engage our core, so pull our belly button in, and then just lift ourselves up by pushing into that left foot. drop the heel of that right foot that turns us a little bit sorry to be backwards to you but then we open up into what we call warrior two so our left foot is forward our left hand is reaching for the front of the room our hips and shoulders for both of you should be exactly Danielle facing the closet door and then we go forward to that right knee that left knee now let's play with what is drifty. So we look at the middle finger now. If you need a break, you just come up and take a little wiggle break. And then come back down into that. We're pushing also into the right foot, so that ground you. Look at the left middle finger now, and then look at the wall. And notice the change in perspective of our, I'm sorry, the forward wall. So you look at your middle finger now, and then you look forward at the distance changing our perspective, that's what the drifty is. And then we come back to the middle finger now, and we notice the, the, the picture looks blurry. Then we look at the picture, and we notice our middle finger now looks blurry. Back again, middle finger now. Um, just being able to see again, different perspective. Let's bring our left forearm onto our left thigh. Reach our right arm up to the ceiling. Think about our right hip reaching, hip bone reaching to the ceiling because that opens our chest up a little bit more. Think about our chest reaching to the ceiling. Look up at that arm if that's comfortable for us. Up at the ceiling. And then reach ourselves up with that right hand straight in that left leg. Back out to the variation of Warrior Two. So now the left hand's reaching for the front of the room, reaching for the front of the room, and then just falls down to wherever it is on that, that leg, and then we twist in triangle. A little bit deeper of a twist. Looking up at that right hand if you can, feeling that left, right hip open, the chest open. Beautiful, gentle, incremental twist open us more towards the ceiling. Look down at our left foot, bend into that left knee, bring the left hand on the outside of the left foot, right hand on the inside of the right foot. No, nope, left foot. <laughs> Lift up the right foot. Sorry about all that. And then we'll do a flow. If your arms don't feel strong enough for a flow, then you can just bring that right foot up to meet the left and stand up. But if we're good for a flow, both hands are on the mat by the left foot. Left foot floats back to where we're at a push up. And then we bring ourselves slowly down to the mat. Our feet go flat, so our toenails are on the mat. Our hands are next to our chest. We push ourselves up just a little bit to give a stretch to that front chest. And now we're going to curl the toes under and give ourselves a nice gentle hug. Shoulders down, we're facing the dog. You okay? You can give it. <laughs> I can't do that. There you are. He's done with 
I did? Yeah, you can come down with this dog. Ugh. There it is. There we go. Okay. Why is it not working? What's that? Why is it not working? Nice to lay down, but you gotta get up. And then we bend our knees and we look at our hands and we're just gonna walk our feet up towards our hands. Have our hips more comfortable. Get to there and then just round ourselves all the way up. Scrunch your shoulders to our ears, then shoulder blades back together. Chest is gloriously open. Taking that breath in, and then the shoulders drop. Beautiful. Oh, that. Nice deep inhale, arms up overhead. And then exhale, forward fold. Feel that a little bit more open, a little bit better. Flexibility, inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hands down to the mat. And this time we take our left foot back, our right foot stays there. We're in that runner's lunge. Again, engaging the core, so feel your belly button pull in a little bit. Push into that right foot as you bring yourself up. Two, it's called runner's lunge. Bending in more to that right leg. Arms reach up, but shoulders stay down. Belly engages, so the core draws into the belly button. And then we drop that left foot down. Our body turns towards the window, so our hips and shoulders are facing the window. The arms are reaching the width of our mat, so the right hand's coming towards the front of the room. Barbara, you want to spread your legs a little bit more so you can bend into that right knee. And then we play with the dress stick. So looking at that middle fingernail, the front wall looks blurry. Looking at the front wall, that middle fingernail looks blurry. Just relax our shoulders, engage our core, bend into the right knee. And then we're going to drop that right forearm on the right thigh. Left arm to reach it over now. Feel that stretch in that left side, opening up. Left hips reaching for the ceiling, left chest is reaching for the ceiling, arms nice and long. Wrist is stacked on top of the elbow, the elbow on top of the shoulder. Nice long line of energy. And reaching more into the ceiling, that's just a little bit more open. Is there a little bit more hip that can go up? A little bit more chest. Incremental changes can be huge. Now we'll pull ourselves up with that left hand, straighten that right leg. Arms out nice and long again, looking at the front of the room. And when we're ready, that right hand reaches, reaches, reaches for the front of the room. And then just drop it down to anywhere it can on the right foot. Left arm's reaching up to the ceiling. And a deeper stretch, feeling that left hip reach for the ceiling, chest reach for the ceiling. And then let's pay attention, check in. Is there a difference on this side than it was the other side? Put your hand further down the right leg, a little bit higher up because you're just not as flexible on this side all about awareness, okay? Engage the core a little bit, just a little bit more on that left hip up. And then look down at your foot, right hand on the outside of the right foot, left hand on the inside of the right foot, left foot lifts. And then again, we can do the sannyasa if that's comfortable. So our hands are flat. We're going to find that right leg going back. We're in a push up. 
And then we slowly keeping our elbows close to our body. If we can bring ourselves down, let's see if we get all the way down to that toe. The feet go flat, hands stay at the chest and feel the pelvis, the pelvic bones push into the mat as the belly lifts into the back, belly button lifts towards the spine. And then on the inhale, it's just a small little lift, which is a nice, beautiful stretch in the front of the chest. And then come down. See about those toes curling. Come up on your knees first. It might be easier today. And then we're gonna have our hands flat on the mat. We're gonna push a little bit more with the hands in the mat, lifting our hips up to the sky. Good. And the idea here, let's review. So the palms are flat on the mat. We're pushing the mat away so the arms are tightening and lengthening. The head falls between the arms. The tailbone is reaching for the ceiling and the heels then reach for the mat. That gives a nice long spine from the neck to the tailbone. You're reaching to keep the hips up to the ceiling. Okay. Yeah, keep it away. Okay, come all the way up then. Um, Danielle, you and I are bending our knees, we're looking at our hands, and we're walking our feet up to our hands. Keep that off for a minute, it's fine. So, and then we're rolling ourselves all the way up. A nice stretch the shoulders. Blades come together. All drop down. The pot is any dizziness. Yeah, it just gets hard. It does. <laughs> we'll be out of these eventually. Let's come down to the mat. So we'll do a little quick flow down to the mat. So arms up overhead. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Hands down to the mat. Bend knees into a squat if we can. Bring hands down by the We just kind of lean back and get ourselves sitting on the mat. And we can grab our straps. Does anybody have a strap? You have a strap. Oh, everybody has straps. They're just hiding from me. All right. So, if we're flexible and we can come down, then that's where we're going to head. But if we're not feeling it today, then you have your strap around the balls of your feet, and you can have your hold. Beautiful. So, with both hands, and first, we're going to feel our sits bones and move any flesh that we need to away. And we're thinking of our head reaching for the ceiling so we have a beautiful long spine where the vertebra is just lying one on top of the other in perfect alignment. The neck is relaxed. And as we inhale, we then start to hinge. So we go a little hinge, hinge, hinge as we're coming forward. And just bringing ourselves to where we can most comfortably, holding and feeling the stretch, and then just holding all the way over, a seated forward fold, just like when we were doing a standing forward fold. The idea eventually is, and it's not ever gonna happen for me, but the belly to be on the thighs, the chin to be on the knees, and the forehead to be on the shins, exactly or just as much as you can in folding over, feeling the stretch, doing that hinging, even when you're at your furthest point, maybe one more hinge, one more hinge. Just seems to get me down a little bit more when I do that hinge motion. That's how it feels for you. So here we are just relaxing, just staying for the micro openings that it allows. Feel it in the back of the thighs. You can feel the upper back get a nice rounding, the low back get a rounding. 
and just breathe into your leg. strong abs, we can lift up our feet, even straighten our legs, and then, sorry, we should bring them back down onto the mat, and then we still have this semi-boat where we're slowly, slowly bringing ourselves to lie down, so that really engage the core, but hold it down, I reverse abs, pretty hard. So, we have our feet on the mat, our knees are facing up and to the ceiling, Let's find our back on the mat. So we play around with jumping up. Um, <clears throat> with adjusting the um, pelvic girdle. So we can push our low back all the way onto the mat and we feel that tilt in our pelvic girdle or in our kind of like the bowl of the pelvis. And then we can lift the back the low back up off the mat and you can do it to exaggeration so you can see how there's but flat on the mat or too far away from that you kind of want to find that in between where your belly feels engaged your back feels comfortable our hands are down the side of our body palms are facing down if you can bring those heels in a little bit closer to your bottom and the knee, you're about an um, inch apart from each other, so they're pretty close to each other. And then we're gonna take our palms and push into the mat as we lift those hips up to the sky. This is bridge. And this can help stretch the front body, the psoas muscle, a large muscle that runs down the front of the body, from the abs to the thighs. And you just keep pushing those hips up to the sky. You help use the feet to help you do that pushing into the mat. A little bit more. Very, very good. Slowly bring yourself down. <coughs> Pardon me. I'll bring our knees into the chest and hold the back of the thighs and just hug them in a little bit. Be able to roll from side to side to massage the spine a little bit. And then bring those feet back down to the mat. We'll do that again. And this time when you push into the mat with your heels and your palms and lift those hips up, there's a space under you now. You can take your hands and put them together, the palms together, and rotate those shoulders under if that feels comfortable, pushing a little bit higher of a bridge. Or just stay where you are with having the palms down and lifting those hips up. Push into the heels, lift the hips up, lift the hips up. Lift the hips up. And then you bring them down with your palms together and your shoulders under, gently roll from side to side to bring them. Out. You're resting your bottom on the mat. You bring your knees into your chest again. And roll from side to side. Heels back down on the mat. Lift the hips up and just shift them over just an inch or two to the left. Arms out the width of the mat, or if it makes sense, arms out wide. 
And then we're going to take our knees and let them fall over to the right. Try to keep that left shoulder down and then look over to your left hand. You'll feel the stretch along the left side of the body. gaze up to look at the ceiling, our knees to face the ceiling, push into the feet and lift the hips up and take them over to the right, one inch past the midline. Knees fall to the left, right shoulder stays down and you look over to the left, that right hand. You feel the stretch in the right side of the body. back to center, look at the ceiling, bring our knees back to center, adjust the hips at midline and hug the knees in again. And if you want to hug the knees underneath by holding the thighs or wrapping the arms around the shins for even a tighter knee hug, bring the hips back, the knees to your neck, lift your head up a little bit, nose towards the ears. And then we'll bring our feet down and we're going to grab this bolster. So this is the bolster. And I like that handle. I'm going to do the side where there's not the handle. I'm bringing it right to, oh man, I'm going to turn this right. <laughs> my feet need to be forward. So now it's just in the, it's hitting my back, my bottom really. And then I'm just gently going to roll myself over and lie on it. <clears throat> if you need something for your head, sorry, you can use your blanket or you can just let your head be there. Let the arms fall out to the sides. Play with your legs. If you need your knees bent, does that feel better? That would be like straight. And this is just a restorative pose where obviously we're opening up the chest. So as you play in this pose, notice the stability of taking that deep breath into that chest. Our feet back to the mat, and our knees are bent, 
and then we can just gently see if it will off of the bolster to go back to turn right where it works. Okay. And you can move the bolster away and put yourself in the fetal position just on your side. Sometimes it's good, it's releasing energy that's not needed or just kind of moving things around, which is why you're here. Yeah. Yeah, so why do all be better? They will be. It is crazy being out there and then once you come into the hospital, wearing them again. Are you wearing yours out and about or are you? Um, I was worried I noticed your hand. Did do you have a port? Did we stretch that on this? I have a port on the left side, but I expect to be on the right side and I put the game on my right side. Okay. So like if we were on this, 